Welcome to the Prophecy for America broadcast, and this is Brother Larry, coming to you with God's truth from God's Word. Welcome back to the Prophecy for America broadcast, and this is Brother Larry. Now, I've been doing audio and video programs now for about a year, and I started with talking about the Chick-fil-A story, and that's how these broadcasts started. Now, this broadcast may be the most difficult and the most serious program I've ever done. And I hope there's enough time that many of you can watch this broadcast. Because I want no one to perish. If you remember last time, my friends, I had a dream about teaching long division to a lady, and the number 185 was a number they were that we were using in the example. And I had columns for each of the numbers and explaining the, the each um, position of each number. And again, I was teaching long division. Well, as you remember, the 185 meant something. Anytime I have a dream with very, very specific details, these are not normal dreams for me. It's a dream that God sends, God sends me, and he always sends me a riddle. Well, for days, I had no idea what that number stood for. And I prayed to God and prayed and prayed and prayed. So finally, a couple of days after that dream, and I had a little quick dream. I asked God, what does the number 185 mean? And he gave me one image. And you're asking, what image was that? Brother Larry, that, that was the image of Willis Tower. He showed me the number means the Willis Tower. Well, when I woke up, I checked the address of Willis Tower. No, it wasn't 185. It was 255 South Wacker. Well, I checked where 185 South Wacker now, this is a mystery. It seems like the address really doesn't exist. But the MapQuest program, or Google Maps, when I opened up the picture of that address, it pointed at the corner of Willis Tower. Yes, it did, my friends. That's where it pointed to. So the dream was telling me something will happen at Willis Tower. I didn't know what it was. I didn't have any dreams of explosions. Well, I did have a dream maybe six months earlier of a atomic explosion. And it happened in Chicago. But I had no idea there's a connection. And then I had another clipping of a lady giving her visions and dreams of an explosion in Chicago. Well, the dream that I had a few days ago was rather profound. Basically, the dream told me one of the times that I'll leave Chicago to go on a trip, and I, I really can't tell you which trip that would be because I really don't know for sure. Okay, I have a feeling maybe, but I don't know for sure. During that trip, I looked back and I saw a mushroom cloud 
over the city of Chicago. So it was suggesting to me that God will have me leave for a trip and Chicago will then be hit with a nuclear weapon. Well, that's laying the foundation of this broadcast. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you what's going on in the news. And I understand that a lot of this is not being reported in the American media. We have a president, or sh should I say a leader in Russia, that is threatening the United States with a nuclear war. And basically, it's over the conflict in Syria. It's saying, if we go into Syria, we are threatening their sovereignty. And it will lead to a nuclear war. And then we have another piece talking about Russia is sending warships and marines into Syria. And then we have another speaker that talks about this crisis as well. So the bottom line is, my friends, and, and also a few days ago, the nuclear forces in Russia has put on alert. Now, I don't know if they're on high alert, but they've been put on alert. So things are starting to heat up, my friends, and it's looking toward a nuclear conflict. And remember from my last broadcast, we had someone that was from the vantage point of southern Illinois seeing mushroom clouds in the northeast and the north and the northwest and the west or the southwest. So it looks like we're going to have four to five cities will be destroyed and Chicago will be one of them. Now you may ask me, what does this have to do with judgment? You know, why, why is this happening to our country? Again, in Revelation 17, the United States is depicted as the harlot. And New York City is the, the Babylon the Great. Now, the harlot, the reason why we're called the harlot, my friends, is because God does not identify a nation as a harlot unless that nation was a godly nation first. And then as they turn their back away from him and go to idols, he then calls them a harlot. Well, that's what's happen happening to our nation, my friends. We have turned our back away from the Lord. We have decided to throw the Bible and God out of the schools. We have decided to murder babies if we don't want them. We have decided to stop supporting Israel. And we've decided that people of the same sex has the right to marry. So, here's the first clipping, the leader of Russia that's talking about an atomic war. So, here we go. Это реалии, с которыми мы все должны считаться. И государственной власти придется дать на этот запрос свой, надеюсь, эффективный ответ. Доктрина государственного суверенитета. Она не должна размываться, даже если это удобно для достижения каких-то текущих политических целей, вплоть до цели избраться на соответствующую позицию. Это просто опасно для мирового порядка. А примеров посягательств на доктрину суверенитета в последние годы было очень немало. Чего стоят и военные операции против иностранных государств в обход Организации Объединенных Наций, заявление о том, что тот или иной политический режим потерял легитимность, причем заявление со стороны иностранных государств, а не со стороны народа соответствующей страны, введение всяческих коллективных санкций в обход международных институтов, 
Все это не улучшает ситуацию в мире, а последствия скоропалительных военных операций в иностранных государствах обычно заканчиваются одним – приходом к власти радикалов. Я уж не говорю, что в какой-нибудь момент такие действия, которые подрывают государственный суверенитет, могут закончиться вполне себе такой полноценной региональной войной. И даже, никого не хочу пугать, с применением ядерного оружия. Об этом должны помнить все. This statement is an obvious message directed to the Obama administration indirectly and the financial power that controls it. Since the illegal war launched in Libya last year and even the more unlawful assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, the administration has done nothing but show a disgusting abuse of executive power and criminal disregard for domestic and international law, a disregard that nations like Russia and even high-level U.S. military officials view as threats to national sovereignty. Russia has repeatedly stated that that is the issue over military intervention in Syria and Iran. Sovereignty. That is the issue at stake with all the threats occurring at this point. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's what's at stake with the joint U.S.-NATO anti-ballistic missile system being built in Europe aimed at Russia. Despite Obama's irrational commitment to war, saner elements in the United States have mounted in and around the U.S. military. Specifically, Representative Walter Jones, in his push for legislation HCR 107, declares that any president who launches war without congressional approval would be immediately subject to impeachment. This was followed by Senator Jim Webb in a restatement he made on the same point in the Senate in his piece of legislation, S-3176, to try to stop a preemptive illegal war. So far, they stand virtually alone, and that in and of itself increases the danger of nuclear war. While Jones's and Webb's legislation is despicably still outstanding in both houses of Congress, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a resolution on Iran that moves the United States much closer to a war footing against Iran. And as many experts and diplomats like Dan Shapiro, the envoy to Israel from the United States, warn, America is ready to attack. The non-binding resolution, H.R. 568, that overwhelmingly passed 401 to 11, effectively calls for a military attack on Iran when it obtains nuclear weapons capability. The vague interpretation already applies to Iran and actually any other country with a civilian nuclear program and comes at a time when Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak is actively urging the international community to increase pressure on Syria, as he says, to strike a further blow to Iran. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former Chief of Staff for the Secretary of State Colin Powell, warned that this resolution reads like the same sheet music that got us into the Iraq war and could be the precursor for a war with Iran. It's effectively a thinly disguised effort to bless war. General Wilkerson is right. And if his and others' warnings are not heeded, whether it's concerning Iran, Syria, or Russia directly, the United States will have violated the rights of a sovereign nation, whose consequences was spelled out by Medvedev yesterday. Those consequences being a thermonuclear war. Now, this next piece talks about the movement of Russian ships and Marines because of Syria. Here we go. We're getting reports that Russia is sending three military ships to Syria. The Russian military official has confirmed that the ships are heading to a Russian base in the Syrian port of Tartus. They're expected to arrive there in a few days. Reports say more than 300 Marines are on board the vessels, but the exact nature of their mission is not clear. Officials in Moscow had earlier said that Russian Marines will be deployed to Tartus to protect the country's staff there. Vyacheslav Murazov, who's a Middle East expert, joins us from Moscow in order to tell us his reading on this. What is your reading uh, of Moscow's decision to send three amphibious assault ships with Marines on board to its naval facility 
uh, in the Syrian port of Tartus. Of course, appearance of three big uh, uh, marine vessels uh, in Tartus these days, uh, while uh, the United States proclaim intensifying their uh, supply of weapon and uh, financing of uh, militarized groups in Syrian oppositions. That means that it's the response of Russia on the Western or American stand towards Syria. I think that the uh, uh, official aim of this visit is th their maneuvering uh, of Russian three fleets, northern, uh, far east, and uh, uh, middle uh, Mediterranean uh, fleet are meeting in, in, in Black Sea. And on the way to the Black Sea, these three uh, big uh, mar marine uh, f uh, vessels stayed in Tartus with 120 uh, marines on board in, on each vessel with all equipment, with all armament that they have at their disposal. I think it is political. Uh, of course, appearance, political uh, signal to the United States, to Turkey, who are making uh, maneuvers on uh, Syrian borders by tanks and others, that Russia will not, will, will not uh, uh, put, uh, uh, stand uh, uh, up, uh, uh, and our Russia do doesn't re retire from the, their position in nearest future. So I think that uh, if we take into consideration uh, uh, position of uh, 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 Kofi Annan, his retirement, and the uh, discussion of issue of Syria in the uh, uh, General Assembly of the United Nations. All these events, if they put together, it's obviously that the uh, United States doesn't want to leave the position that main uh, uh, of encouraging uh, uh, militarized groups for uh, military action in Syria. It is absolutely clear, it is violation of all international law existed and violation of charter of the United Nations that prohibited any interference, and especially military interference in foreign affairs. Uh, foreign countries, I think that uh, ignoring of international law, the United States proclaimed a new policy for the United States in 21st century, that don't respect any law, international law, don't respect the will of the people, because uh, what what is uh, uh, forces that fighting uh, uh, Syrian government today in Syria, they are foreigners mainly. Foreigners coming and encouraged from outside. I think that it is not a just position of the United States. And all accusation towards China, Russia, that they, are, uh, they brought to this conflict, it is a big lie. We cannot agree with this uh, approach of the United States officials. Uh, they they uh, giving, uh, uh, they uh, uh, talking about uh, responsibility of Russia for undermining uh, mission of uh, Kofi Annan. I say that Kofi Annan mission was rejected from the very beginning by the United States, who said that it is not uh, the goals of the, this mission. The goal of that mission should be our overthrowing uh, existing uh, authority in Syria. It's what not a uh, uh, decision of the uh, Security Council uh, Committee. That it was Security Council who decided to bring peace on to Syria, but United States wanted the war. So, uh, in this condition, I don't think that uh, Syrian government should have any restrictions to undertake any uh, me measures, any means to uh, to stop violations on their uh, uh, country, in their country. It is their legitimate right for Sy Syrian authority to use all forces at their disposal to put an end of these violations. Russia, on my, my opinion, is making all efforts on international level to prohibit foreign or open uh, intervention in Syria from Turkey, from Lebanon, from any other directions. I think that foreign uh, interference is excluded, but interference undercover and interference in the sending weapon, a modern weapon, a rocket against uh, 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 aviation, uh, rockets against tanks, and uh, more, many other things, 
military, uh, military purposes are uh, made from American side. I think that it is the way to war, not the way to peace. Russia choose the peace. America choose the war. Well, with all due respect, it's not just the United States, as you mentioned, uh, who has ignored international law, which in, uh, uh, in essence has made a mockery of the UN, uh, also France, also UK, and also some other countries. But uh, when you say it's a political move by Russia to send these uh, three uh, uh, what's uh, amphibious assault ships with Marines on board, I think you said there's 120 on board each, making it 360. Well, uh, isn't that a fine line that might be uh, passed when you say that's in retaliation to the U.S. and its partners funding uh, militarily uh, these uh, militants on the ground? I don't think that uh, Russian military presence in, uh, on, uh, in the sea, in the uh, Tartus, the official port of Syria that is uh, uh, acknowledged by all countries as an independent state, is the subject of any quarrel between Russia and the United States. I don't imagine any uh, cases that uh, such kind of maneuvering, a peaceful maneuvering, will bring uh, confrontation, military confrontation between the United States and Russia. I think that uh, within those, th th those limits of uh, uh, political means, I think that w Russia came to this conclusion and using military forces as a political means to prove their political stand to de uh, events developing on Syrian soil. I think it is uh, firm position, political, diplomatical position, uh, including uh, a Russian position in the United Nations, uh, through discussions the uh, Saudi uh, uh, offer to, uh, to blame Syrian government on violation, on demand of Syrian uh, president to retire. I think it is not uh, the right for a, a general assembly even discuss such kind of issues. Uh, any questions concerning world security, world situation, uh, are to, uh, is the subject of uh, uh, Security Council, but not General Assembly discussion. I think it is very old uh, quarrel between uh, and uh, uh, between the United States and Russia, beginning from Korean War in the 50s, when the uh, United States pressed Russian, Soviet at that time, uh, government to acknowledge that decisions of uh, General Assembly more important than decisions of Security Council. Charter of the United Nations give another uh, answer for this question. It is very uh, old uh, dispute between the United States, Washington and Moscow, and I think that the United States uh, using the same uh, method uh, to uh, uh, achieve their go political, uh, geopolitical goals in the Middle East. I think that Russian position is absolutely firm, absolutely just, and based on legitimate uh, uh, stand of United Nations uh, Charter. Thank you very much. We just uh, love Matazov, Middle East expert there talking to us from Moscow. Now here's the next piece coming to you from Paul Bagley, and he talks about the crisis in Syria. Breaking news, breaking news out of the Middle East. There is Russian, a Russian ship has just left Syria with families of the Syrian high brass fleeing the country for fear of a U.S. strike. As the, the, those who have gathered themselves around President Bashir Assad, these top diplomats, governmental officials, cabinet members, the uh, inner circle, if you will, of the Osa of the uh, President Assad regime have been, it's reported, have jumped on a ship and are sailing away from Damascus, Syria. Uh, a quick report, I want to thank Sheila of Alabama for this report. The families of the senior figures in the Assad regime were fleeing Syria on Monday night, last night, uh, August the 26, 2013, ahead of the anticipated U.S.-led strike against the regime targets, according to Israeli television is reporting. The families of some of the heads of the regime 
were flying out of the airport in west of the country, according to Channel 2 News. The airport happens to be named after President Bashar Assad's late older brother, Basil, who had been slated to take over as president from his father before he died in a car accident back in 1994. Israeli media Monday night, you know, you might you wonder sometimes if he would have taken over instead of uh, Bashir Assad, would this be a whole different situation? And does God see that in advance when he looks in Bible prophecy? Isn't that what prophecy is about? Oh my goodness. So we know this is happening. Now I want to thank Sheila. Back. We also have more reports. Uh, uh, and I want to thank uh, Nick of New York for this report. The Arab League now has officially come out and accuses Assad's regime in Syria of the chemical attacks. Word from Cairo, Egypt, the Arab League has blamed Syrian government for last week's alleged chemical weapons attack near the suburbs of Damascus that killed hundreds, if not as much as 2,000 people and they're calling for the perpetrators to be brought to justice. In an emergency meeting held Tuesday, the Arab League also called on members of the UN Security Council to overcome their differences and agree on a deterrent measures against those who committed this heinous... This, this is, look, folks, this is absolutely horrendous, horrible... Uh, what's taking place. And I believe the reason the Arab League is coming out with this now, they see the hand right on the wall. They know Obama's coming with the hellfire brimstone. And they say, why don't we do this? Why don't you admit aside it happened? And let's pull, let, let's, let's, let's find the perpetrators and let's prosecute them and deal with them and save your government. Um, while that was going on, thank you, Nick of New York, for that report. We're finding out who's really driving the intelligence behind the whole situation. Sheila of Alabama, Reverend Gary, uh, just all kinds of folks. Uh, uh, is, uh, Stephen, Stephen of Oklahoma, Israeli intelligence seen as the central to the U.S. case against Syria. While Israel will almost certainly take no part in the uh, military strike, Israeli intelligence information is widely believed to have played a central role in enabling the United States to uh, convict Assad regime that they are the ones that fired the chemical weapons at civilians on the suburbs of Damascus, killing hundreds and wounding over 3,000 people, uh, according to the Syrian rebel groups are reporting. Now, the large delegation of Israeli Security officials is currently in Washington, D.C. right now holding talks with top administration officials led by U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice. So Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held his second meeting in two days with his security cabinet to discuss the Syrian crisis this afternoon. Folks, it is starting to really heat up. Rats are jumping off the ship. Well, I should take that back. Rats are jumping on the ship to get out of Dodge. It looks as if Damascus' future is now the destruction, maybe, not the whole city, but certainly more of the prophecy of Isaiah 17, 1, and Jeremiah 49, 23 through 27, and the, and the Arab Spring prophesied in, which, which is the great fury, Daniel. We're going to go there and talk about that today on my live show, so don't miss the show. We're going to be in Daniel 11, 41 through 45, the Arab Spring and the great fury of the Antichrist spirit is coming down on Syria, and it's in the Bible, and we're going to talk about it. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Things are really heating up. Give your life to Jesus Christ. This is a prophecy alert. Now here's our last segment, talking about other disasters that's coming to America. And... I was looking at this, and maybe some of these things could have been caused by a nuclear attack. Okay, here we go. Hi, guys. Um, I wanted to come back on here. Uh, this is my first time using this software, so forgive me with my stumbleness. But um, I wanted to show, after I got done recording that message that I just uploaded, 
the Lord gave me another vision. And this is kind of like a sequel, I guess, is the way I want to put it. Um, all right. What he did was, before, when I was standing over here, he was showing me the state, you know, the United States. And it was almost like a 2D. I don't even want to say 3D, because it was like tilted up toward me. I was like, I'm, I'm standing in my person, and I'm over here at the bottom, and I'm looking at the whole entire United States. He had me zoom in over to here, right in this area. And I don't know if I can, can I, okay, right here. Um, right in this area where I'm going over, this area right here, all over here in this, in this area, he had show, he was showing me the land was just breaking off, just breaking off and going into the ocean, okay? I, I was seeing water coming up, then land breaking off just breaking off into the ocean. It was the lower half here. All this area here. And I saw people and they were running. Um, There's panic in their faces. And I kept hearing people saying, get to higher ground. Get to higher ground. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, like I said, there was panic. It was very vivid what he gave me concerning this area and here all this breaking away. So when I initially saw this um, vision, you know, I, first I saw an explosion, then I saw the breaking away, and it was almost like uh, God wanted to clarify with me. So that's why he showed me this first. He said, this will happen first. Um, this area here, I do not know if this is an earthquake. I did not get that message. He was just showing me a visual. Then, after that is where I saw the explosion around here. It was right about here that I saw the explosion. So this happens first, then right after that there's an explosion right up here. It wasn't at the top, it was right here. Because now that I'm looking at the map it makes more sense to me how, how I saw it, you know, in my vision. And it was just, it was during the day and it was just major, major destruction going on here. Now, I know a lot of people have been posting dreams and visions and um, prophecies about, you know, an earthquake, the big one coming to Los, you know, which come, not Los Angeles, but California. Uh, not sure what area, but this is what the Lord has shown me. So I wanted to put this out there. I don't know, for a warning, for whatever, but forgive um my tone of voice, but what I saw, it was just so devastating. It was just so devastating. So then, um, shortly after, you know, he zoomed me in here, like I said, then he brought me back down to see the map again. And this is the same vision. It was like a dual thing here. And these are two separate events. It does not happen the same day as what I was getting. So he brought me back down here, and then over here at the edge of Texas, okay, right at the edge, all I was seeing was a bunch of fire. I mean, a lot of fire. And this was at nighttime. And the fire went along this whole border here, along this way, going all the way here. And then I saw two major, like, explosions, fires right here. There were two of them that were going on. But like I said, this is all on fire. And we know the sinkholes are, you know, somewhere in here. But this was all on fire. Then what I saw was, like, electricity. There was no fire. Oh, before that, I heard three big booms while well, this fire is going on. And I see, I see everything. I heard three huge booms. Then is when I saw, it was like electricity. No fire. No, um, you know, smoke, nothing like that, but it was electricity going all the way up to here and to here. It's just like electricity, a little tiny bit of sparks with it, but it looked like electricity. So I wanted to give a visual of that 
um, on the computer here to show you exactly what the Lord was showing me. Um, like I said in my previous message, it was the opposite. First I, you know, I saw this first and then this, but no, he had to clarify it with me. This happens first, then the explosion over here, then this happens on a separate event. So if anyone is having the same vision, dreams, messages, what have you, um, post them below in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate it to see if I'm getting any confirmation if people are, you know, having the same um, messages delivered to them. But I know that we are in for something really major coming here because it's not just going to be in these two areas, I believe. Um, from what I've received in previous messages, it's just like that's the start of it. Then we're going to be having things going on throughout the whole United States. So, okay. Thank you for watching. God bless. All right. As you can see, here are the things that are just about to come to a head against the United States. And like I said, I don't know when these things will happen. But they're coming rather quickly. And again, the American media is not reporting most of these things. I have to go find them through other sources. So, my friends, I beg you, please, please let the Lord come in your heart. Read the Bible. Make the Lord your master of your life not your co-pilot not your friend but your master you must be his slave you cannot be a slave of Jesus and be a slave of the world you have to have you have to be one or the other my friends you can't do both you either love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other then you need to be I should say you need to repent of your sins and then be baptized of the water and then be baptized of the Holy Spirit. And one of the signs of being baptized of the Holy Spirit, my friends, is speaking in tongues. That's correct. I know a lot of you may not know a lot about that. It may seem weird and strange, but read the book of Acts. It talks all about it. And that's not something that goes away in time. All these gifts are here today. All of them. Prophesy. Speaking in tongues. Interpreting tongues. Healing. All these things are here today, my friends. All of them. So, read your Bible. Get closer to the Lord. Get closer to the Lord, my friends. And then many of you will be spared whatever comes along. Because the Lord will reach the worthy and spare them, spare them of the wrath of God. And I started with New York City already. I've got some letters in some of their churches. Some of the churches are very, very small. Many of them only have 50 members, sometimes 25 members. And they don't seem to populate the suburbs that much. It's mostly in the inner cities. That's correct. In the Bronx and Brooklyn, some in Queens, some in Manhattan. Okay, So just want to let you know that uh, we're trying to reach them because the Lord, the, another voice in heaven says, Come out of her, my people that you won't experience the sins. All right, my friends. I hope, I hope and pray you watch this video. Do what you need to do. I do believe if the Lord wants to spare you, he will tell you. But you have to belong to him first. You have to be his property his slave and then he will make sure you will be saved from all these terrible terrible things that's going to come upon us in any time 
I love all of you. I want all of you to have internal life. I don't want anyone to perish. God bless all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining today's broadcast of the Prophecy for America with Brother Larry. If you wish to contact us, email us at houseof.israel at yahoo.com. Again, that's houseof.israel at yahoo.com. So thank you and God bless. All my